Hello everyone and welcome back. I am Mr. Cobalt and today uh, we are going to be going over how to name binary ionic compounds that have transition elements in them. And what we are really interested in is not merely that they are transition metals but that they have a variable charge. Not all uh, transition elements have a variable charge but most of them, by, by and large, most of them have variable charges. So there were those few exceptions. Silver only has a plus one charge. Uh, we have zinc, which has a plus two charge. We have uh, scandium, which has, I believe, if I remember correctly, a plus one charge. Um, and, uh, or is it plus three charge? I think it's plus three charge. And we have cadmium that has a plus two charge. So all of those only have one charge. So this, uh, is not going to apply to them, but all the rest of them that have multiple charges um, are going to need to be named a little bit differently. But if you remember, keep in mind that what I said before is um, it's really easy to name ionic compounds if you know the names of the ions. So if you know the name of the metal ion, the plus ion, and if you know the name of the negative ion, right? So if you know those the names of the negative and plus ions, the anion and cation, then you just put those names together and that's the name of your compound. Um, so <clears throat> let me go over well, why is it important uh, to name these differently? What does it matter if you have a, neg uh, a, a plus two charge or a, a plus one charge? What, how, why does it matter? Well, if, we, if you remember from before, with regard to the naming of the ions, we named the ionic compound. So here we have a binary compound, and before we named it, okay, so if you know the name of the metal ion, right, and that was, for example, the, and the metal ion is, is the name of the metal ion was the name of the element itself, right? Um, so this would be copper on the periodic table, so we would call this the copper ion. And then oxygen, the non-metal, we, we named that by dropping the ending and adding IDE. So this went from oxygen to the oxide ion. And so we bring those two together, and then we would name this copper oxide. All right, so that's fair enough. So that's the way we would name that one. And then we have this compound here, uh, Cu2O, and we would do the same thing. We have copper, and so this would be copper. So the first part of the name would be copper. And again, followed by oxygen. So we would drop the ending and add IDE, and that would be oxide. So right away, you can kind of see a problem. It's like we have two different compounds, but if we use the, the, the way of naming um, that we saw before in my previous video, where uh, you just put the names of the ions together and you get um, the name of the compound, you'll see that both compounds have the exact same name, yet they are different compounds. We can't have that. So because of that, um, we need a different way of naming. And the reason that we get these two different compounds uh, is because of the different charge on copper, right? And we can figure out the charge on copper pretty simply, right? So if you go back to what we learned before, um, if I know the charge on the non-metal, Right, so I go to the non-metal and I figure out what the charge is on the non-metal. So that I should know from the periodic table and from the pattern of charges on the periodic table. So I know that oxygen is in group six. So that means that group six elements, if I use the rule that I have the group number minus eight, six minus eight is negative two. So I know that oxygen has a negative two. 
I know also the the uh, the rule of zero uh, the the zero rule for for ionic compounds. So I know that all ionic compounds have to have an overall total charge of zero. They are neutral. And so since I have a total of a negative two charge from the oxygen and I have one copper atom, so that means that that copper atom has to have a positive two charge to balance out the negative two. So this copper has a positive two charge, okay? If I do the same thing for this element, or this uh, ionic compound here, I do the same thing. I have one oxygen. That oxygen is going to have a two, a negative two charge. And so again, if I'm going to balance out the total of negative charge, it is a negative two. So that means my total positive charge has to be a positive two to balance out the negative two. But now I have two atoms of copper. So that positive two charge has to be divided equally among those two atoms. So if I, have, if I need a positive two charge, then I need a positive one on each atom, right? So if I take the positive two charge total, I divide it evenly among the two atoms, and that gives me a plus one. So each copper atom has uh, a plus one charge. And so now that I've figured out the charges on my ion, then I can name the ions. And so this is the way we name the ions regarding charge. So what distinguishes these two compounds is the charge on the metal ion. And so we need a way to name those metal ions that is going to distinguish the compound, right? And distinguish the ions because um, if this is uh, copper with a 2 plus and this is copper with a 1 plus, we need a way to distinguish those two ions because they're different ions. And so the way we do that is with Roman numerals. So we're going to use the Roman numeral to identify the charge on the positive ion. And, and that's all the Roman numeral does. It, it identifies the charge. And that's the way we're going to name our positive ions. So this copper here, right, so copper, since this has a copper, uh, a, a, a 2 plus charge on the copper, we're going to name that copper 2, right? So this ion, so let me erase the names here, right? So, so this it has a 2 plus charge, so the name of that ion is copper 2. So we call it a copper 2 ion, so copper. And we put this in parentheses, we're going to take Roman numeral 2, in parentheses and technically you'll notice I did not put a space between there so there's no space between the parentheses and the name copper so it's copper 2 so that is the name of the first ion of this ion here so we call it the copper 2 ion right same thing here this is uh, this these copper atoms have a plus one charge so we're going to, those ions, or each of those ions is called a copper one ion. So we're going to name that ion copper one, and we put parentheses Roman numeral one. So now we have a way of distinguishing the two ions. So when we uh, name this compound, again, it just comes back to, um, do I know the names of the different ions? If I know the names of the different ions, I put those names together and I get the name of the compound. And the positive ion is always written first, so that is always in the name first. So for this compound here, it's going to be copper 2 and then followed by the oxide ion. So we drop the ion and we just say oxide. So this substance is called copper 2 oxide because the copper 2 refer is the name for 
the positive ion because it has a plus two charge. And then we have the oxide ion, so copper two oxide. So that is the name of that compound. And this one, since we have a, a plus one charge, so that one is going to be copper one. And then we add the name of the negative ion, the anion, and that's going to be oxide. So then again, we have oxide added on. And so this compound is called copper one oxide. And that's how you name the ionic compounds that have uh, the positive ion with a variable charge. It can have multiple charges, so you have to figure out what charge is on that particular ion and then add the Roman numeral to indicate the charge. Okay, The Roman numeral does not indicate how many of those atoms I have in my formula, so don't confuse it with that. The Roman numeral only indicates the charge on the ion because that's part of the name of the ion. So this is called the copper 2 ion because of the 2 charge. This is called the copper 1 ion because of the 1 charge, not because I have a 1 down here, which I don't. Okay, so don't confuse that. So it's just the name, it's part of the name of the ion. It represents or indicates the charge on the ion. Okay, so um, so that's a couple of examples. Uh, here's we're going to do a couple more examples um, to kind of solidify this. Okay, so here I have a formula, and I need to name this substance. So I need to first I need to identify what kind of substance am I dealing with. I look here. I have a metal and a non-metal, so it's ionic. Good, so I'm going to name this like an ion or uh, ionic substance. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the metal and determine is this a transition metal with variable charges or is it one of the main group metals that have only a single charge or is it one of the exceptions like silver or cadmium that only has one charge. Um, it is not one of the exceptions. It is a transition element, so this one is going to have variable charge. So I need to figure out what charge is on the metal. So the way I do that again is I, I, I go to my non-metal and I figure out what the charge is on the non-metal. That I should be able to figure out from my periodic table. So Cl is chlorine. Chlorine has uh, a negative charge because it's in group 7. Group 7, 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So I know that, so I have a total of four. So that means I have a total of a four negative charge. That means I need a total of a positive charge because I need to balance out the charge. I only have one lead ion, so the total charge on the lead should be a positive four to balance out the total negative charge. So now I know the charge on my lead, so the name of this ion is lead four ion, right? So it's got the lead four ion. I know the name of this one is called the chloride ion and I add chloride. And so the name of this substance is lead four chloride. Okay, let's go on to this one. I, I do the same thing. Do I have a metal and a non-metal? I have a metal and I have a non-metal. Ionic. What kind of metal do this? Is this a main group? Does it have variable charge? It's a, it's a transition metal and it does have variable charge, so I need to figure out what the charge is. I go to the non-metal. I should be able to figure that out. So sulfur is in group six. Six minus eight is two negative. So I have a total of a two negative, and so I need a total of a two positive. So then this becomes iron two. So I have iron two, and then I add the name of this one is sulfide. So I add sulfide, and that's the name of that substance. I hope this was clear, I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, like the video, share the video, 
uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification. I'll see you next time.